Welcome to a riveting journey through the intriguing and tumultuous life of Sophia Dorothea, a woman born into the drama of royalty, whose tale unfolds with scandals, betrayals, and unexpected twists. As we delve into the pages of history, we'll witness Sophia's resilience in the face of family turmoil, political machinations, and personal tragedies. But beware, for this narrative is a tapestry woven with secrets, lies, and a surprising turn of events that will keep you on the edge of your seat. Before we unfold this captivating saga, make sure to subscribe to our channel to stay tuned for more historical explorations. On March 16th, 1687, Sophia Dorothea took her first breath, unaware that she belonged to the pinnacle of society. Her father ascended to become King George Brumbert of Great Britain, and her brother awaited his turn for the throne. Regrettably, the family's notoriety matched their aristocratic name. Sophia's childhood witnessed the implosion of her family in a spectacular manner. Her parents, deeply discontented, saw her mother engaging in an affair with a courtier. Seeking a brutal retribution, Sophia's father had the lover killed and confined his wife for life. Welcome to the dark realities of the 17th century. Growing up motherless and haunted by her father, Sophia's familial ties were about to plunge into further chaos. Living in Hanover, Sophia was surrounded by numerous relatives, with one cousin, Frederick William, the heir apparent to the Prussian throne, persistently orbiting her. Despite Sophia's reluctance, Frederick harbored strong feelings for her, exuding a disconcerting, creepy kid with a crush on his cousin vibe. Unfortunately, this infatuation would spell trouble for Sophia. As time elapsed and Frederick's marriage loomed, he was presented with two potential brides, Sophia and another woman who stood little chance. Despite familial opposition, Frederick, still nursing a significant crush on Sophia, chose her unequivocally. Yet, Sophia had much to prove. Anticipating Frederick's ascent to the Prussian throne, Sophia's family recognized the need to match his grandeur. Sophia's grandmother orchestrated the acquisition of an exquisite trousseau from Paris, ensuring she was clad in the finest attire. Sophia's fashion choices leading up to and following the wedding remain renowned, a testament to her impeccable style. Sophia, at this juncture, possessed a magnetic allure. While not universally deemed a perfect ten, her tall, slim beauty coupled with abundant charm rendered her undeniably attractive. Conversely, Frederick was not as fortunate in the charm department and harbored dark secrets. Even in his youth, Frederick displayed a volatile temper, prone to physical violence and known for attacking servants in fits of rage. His military obsession and stringent frugality with money painted a concerning picture. Sophia was in for a tumultuous journey. Sophia's lukewarm feelings toward Frederick made their lavish and protracted wedding in 1706 nearly unbearable. Frederick's smarmy welcome outside the city gates of his family's court in Berlin initiated six weeks of elaborate celebrations. Throughout, Sophia likely yearned to find something to appreciate in the man destined to be her lifelong partner. The opposite unfolded. Post-celebrations, Sophia confronted a harsh reality with her husband. Beyond personality clashes, they were fundamentally disparate individuals. Sophia's vibrant spirit, enamored with entertainment and the arts, sharply contrasted with her husband's grumpy disdain for what he deemed frivolous. In the same year of their union, Sophia and Frederick faced a crisis. Sensing Sophia's reluctance, Frederick contemplated calling off the marriage and divorcing her. He questioned why he should love her if she wasn't fully committed. A surprise event, however, intervened, potentially altering the course of their tumultuous relationship. Just on the verge of becoming a divorcee, Sophia received momentous news. She was pregnant. The year following her wedding, she gave birth to a male heir, Frederick Louis. This accomplishment not only showcased her fertility, but also bestowed significant political influence upon Sophia in Prussia, altering the dynamics of her marriage, at least for a while. However, tragedy loomed on the horizon. 
In 1708, Sophia endured a true nightmare. Her infant son, Frederick Louis, passed away, causing profound grief and diminishing her standing at court. To compound matters, doctors delivered a grim prognosis. She wouldn't conceive again, leaving Prussia without further heirs. In an instant, Sophia's fairy tale existence crumbled, and her position within the royal family became more precarious than ever. Then, an unexpected twist occurred. Sophia's fertility struggles threw the royal court into chaos, prompting even her middle-aged father-in-law to remarry in a desperate bid for male heirs. Undeterred, Sophia defied medical predictions. Not only did she conceive and give birth to a daughter the following year, but in 1712 she welcomed another healthy baby boy named Frederick and nicknamed Fritz. Remarkably, Sophia would go on to have a total of 14 children. Yet, as this challenge subsided, her real trials began. Sophia's production of a male heir proved timely. The year after Fritz's birth, she ascended to the throne as Queen of Prussia following her father-in-law's death. It became a weighty responsibility, particularly with Prussia engaged in open war with Sweden and her husband deeply involved in military campaigns. Nevertheless, Sophia excelled in this role. Intelligent, astute and daring, Sophia wasted no time immersing herself in politics. She accompanied Frederick on campaigns until pregnancies brought her back to Berlin. Even then, Frederick entrusted her so completely that he insisted his ministers defer decisions to his wife in his absence. However, this double-edged sword became apparent. Over time, Sophia's active role in politics and ambitious pursuits led her husband to harbour dark thoughts. He grew to resent her influence and eventually insisted that women were only valuable for breeding and submission. What had briefly seemed like a reconciliation between Sophia and Frederick unraveled. Frederick's nasty temper escalated into terrifying displays of rage. Fueled by insecurity about his masculinity, he not only attacked his servants, but also turned on his own children, especially if he perceived them as too idle, a quality he despised. At his worst, Frederick even accosted random people in the street for appearing lazy. Sophia, aghast, reacted in the only way she knew how. Once slender and attractive, Sophia's marriage to Frederick undermined her desire to present herself as the perfect wife. She allowed herself to change, gaining weight with a sense of liberation. Despite retaining her graceful bearing and earning the nickname Olympia, Frederick expressed displeasure. Frederick's long-standing frugality extended to keeping the palace pantries meagerly supplied, coincidentally allowing him control over Sophia's diet. She had to scrounge up money from others just to afford a simple omelette for supper. Unfortunately, financial issues weren't her only concern. Acknowledging her husband's horrific behavior, Sophia exhibited toxic traits herself. A restless gambler, she sought to conceal her habit from Frederick resorting to playing with coffee beans instead of money when he was present. Yet one day, her rebellion would go too far. Sophia's defiance of her husband extended beyond gambling. She embraced the good life whenever the opportunity arose. Often, she hosted extravagant parties, taking advantage of the king's illness, ensuring his absence. During one such grand ball, Sophia reveled in dance and gambling, adorned with her most expensive jewels. However, the joy was short-lived when an unexpected face appeared at the entrance. Sophia was suddenly confronted with the arrival of her husband at the ball. Struck dumb and terrified, she hastily instructed the servants to halt the music and dancing. Simultaneously, she sought to unclasp her jewels and conceal them, wary of her money-obsessed husband's reaction. Clearly, a change was needed in the Prussian court and change was imminent. In 1726, after decades of marriage, Sophia received news of her mother's passing, the same mother her father had confined. While likely harboring mixed feelings about the situation, the inheritance brought a significant boon. Sophia was now the recipient of a substantial $3 million fortune. Strangely, her husband's response added a perplexing layer to the situation. Once Frederick realized that Sophia possessed newfound wealth, 
his demeanor towards her transformed. The formerly coarse and distant Frederick now treated Sophia with an unexpected tenderness. However, what ensued was nothing short of appalling. Despite familial maneuvers, Sophia never received a penny from her mother's bequest. To compound the betrayal, when Frederick realized his wife wouldn't provide him with a financial windfall, he reverted to mistreating her. Frederick's true colors became evident, setting the stage for a familial crisis. Sophia's close relationship with her eldest son, Fritz, was marked by shared intellectual pursuits, discussions on music and the arts, creating a heartwarming connection. However, this intimacy also laid the groundwork for a tragic divide. While Sophia enjoyed a positive rapport with her son, Frederick, the king, harbored disdain for him. He desired an heir molded in his image, militaristic, masculine, and frugal. Fritz's aversion to this vision and his close bond with Sophia pushed the king over the edge. Accustomed to having his way, Frederick unleashed breathtaking revenge. He tormented Fritz whenever possible, punishing him for falls from his horse or even wearing gloves in the cold, an expression of vulnerability that Frederick abhorred. Sophia became the next target of his malevolence. Realizing Fritz sought solace in his mother's presence, Frederick barred Sophia from seeing her children without his presence. Any communication with Fritz had to go through a third party, escalating a dangerous game. Refusing to submit, Sophia initiated secret meetings with her children, defying Frederick's edict. However, these clandestine gatherings intensified the danger. During one instance, the king barged into her room unannounced, forcing the terrified children to hide in the furniture. The situation was reaching a breaking point. Frederick's controlling tendencies spiraled out of control. Seemingly paranoid that his family was conspiring without him, a suspicion not entirely unfounded, Frederick compelled the entire household to attend to him from dawn to dusk, never granting them respite. Concurrently, his fits of rage intensified, with both servants and heirs bearing the brunt of his temper. With no apparent escape, Sophia began crafting a plan to liberate her son, a plan that would go down in history as one of the biggest mishaps. Sophia, driven by ambition, harbored long-standing plans to arrange strategic marriages for her children. She aimed to wed her son, Fritz, to Princess Amelia of Great Britain and her eldest daughter, Wilhelmine, to the Prince of Wales, an alliance of significant prestige with Britain. Convincing Frederick proved arduous, and opposition persisted within the Prussian court. Just as she succeeded in swaying her husband, an astonishing event unfolded. In 1723, on the verge of finalizing arrangements for the double wedding, Sophia and her husband were scheduled to meet the British monarch. However, a sudden familiar pain struck Sophia, compelling her to stay home while Frederick proceeded alone. The ensuing medical revelation left everyone stunned. Remarkably, Sophia missed the planned meeting due to an unforeseen labor. She gave birth to her twelfth child, Anna, without realizing she was pregnant throughout the preceding nine months. The unexpected turn of events opened the door for malicious rumors. Sophia's enemies, particularly courtiers loyal to her husband, exploited the surprise pregnancy to circulate a rumor suggesting she intentionally concealed her condition. The insinuation? The baby was the result of an affair. The repercussions were as unpredictable as they were damaging. Upon learning of the rumor, Frederick stormed into Sophia's chambers in a fit of rage, despite her recovery from childbirth. Allegedly, Sophia's lady-in-waiting had to intervene to prevent Frederick from physically assaulting his wife. His anger, however, didn't stop there. While stopping short of harming Sophia physically, Frederick interrogated one of his doctor acquaintances to determine if the child was a product of adultery. This ordeal unfolded in an era without ultrasounds, reflecting Frederick's erratic behavior. Although he eventually relented, the respite was short-lived. The scandal not only derailed Sophia's grand wedding negotiations with Britain, but inflicted severe damage on them. The once open window of opportunity slammed shut and the plans remained unrealized. 
Frederick's reaction was severe, blaming Sophia for the failure and sealing off the passage between their rooms for six weeks. However, a long overdue reckoning loomed on the horizon. Sophia wasn't the only one reaching the end of their patience with King Frederick. Her eldest son, Fritz, was on the brink of rebellion. He confided in his mother, revealing a dreadful plan to escape the palace and the nightmarish existence it represented. In an instant, Sophia transitioned from rebellion to treason. Sophia not only kept her son's escape plan under wraps, but actively aided in its plotting. Corresponding with him on the details, she played a crucial role in the scheme. In August 1730, she was unsurprised when Fritz fled into the night with his tutor during a provincial tour alongside his father. What shocked her, however, was the harrowing aftermath. Regrettably, Fritz's attempt to escape was thwarted. His father apprehended him and the tutor. The ensuing cruelty was unparalleled. King Frederick, devoid of mercy, beheaded the tutor before his wayward son and imprisoned Fritz in a fortress for months before ultimately exiling him from the court. However, the cruelest blow was reserved for his wife. Upon concluding matters with his rebellious heir, King Frederick confronted Sophia, suspecting her involvement due to a trail of letters. He callously informed her that her son was dead. Sophia, in disbelief, questioned whether he had truly harmed his own flesh and blood, to which Frederick heartlessly retorted, He was not my son. He was only a miserable deserter. The strange conclusion to this event awaited. Despite the dysfunction that permeated the Prussian royal family, a surprisingly happy ending emerged. Sophia eventually discovered her son's survival, and within a couple of years, normalcy returned to the palace. A reconciliation unfolded between parents and son, bringing an unexpected conclusion to this tumultuous chapter. King Frederick's apparent unwellness masked a deeper, more severe illness, potentially porphyria, causing painful symptoms like skin blisters. While this could explain some of his irritability, his body continued to fail him as he aged. In the late 1730s, Frederick's health reached its terminal stages. Frequent use of a wheelchair and debilitating bouts of illness marked his decline. Despite his deserving fate, Sophia, surprisingly, did not relish in his suffering. Instead, an unexpected change overcame her. Confronted with her husband's final moments, Sophia assumed the caretaker role she had long resisted. She attended to Frederick tirelessly, administering his medicine and engaging with him whenever he was conscious. Despite her efforts, genuine comfort remained elusive, and when the end arrived, it came swiftly. Sophia, attuned to her husband's every mood, sensed a profound change on May 26, 1740, indicating the king was nearing death. Following protocol, she summoned her son Fritz to witness his father's final breaths and the subsequent ascension to kingship. Yet she had one last act of betrayal in store for her husband. Despite their turbulent history and mutual betrayals, Frederick and Sophia were oddly interdependent in the end. Frederick's last wish was to die in Sophia's arms, but she couldn't bear it. Overwhelmed with grief, attendants carried her out before Frederick's last breath, leaving him to expire in his son's arms. Sophia mourned her husband more profoundly than anticipated, but being a newly minted dowager had its perks. Her son, now Frederick the Great, remained devoted, insisting she never address him as Your Majesty because their maternal bond surpassed royal formalities. This was just one of the privileges he bestowed upon her. Frederick's profound attachment to his mother continued, ensuring she held the highest regard in his palace. His return from campaigns always involved a visit to her first, and he would only sit in her presence with her permission. In 1757, at the age of 70, Sophia passed away, finally free from the troubles that had long plagued her. 